All right, so we're going to be talking in, through the book of Acts, uh, or talking about Acts chapter 27. We'll get A.D., we'll see what time looks like, um, but we might try to get into the first part of, of 28. You'll see why, because it kind of fits the narrative there. Um, but we're talking about going with God and the need for us to go with God. The alternative is to go without God, right? Not as good. Maybe some of you have tried to do things without him, and you've experienced what that's like when that doesn't happen, or what, what doesn't happen and what does happen. But when we go with God, that changes everything, right? It absolutely changes everything. So we're going to be talking about that. Now, just looking at it the last week, what are some things that have happened that you've needed help with this week? What are some things that you've talked about needing people with us? What are some things that you've needed help with this week? Everything. Okay, here we go. It's very broad, but you know. Fixing a fireplace. There we go. What else? Nobody's needing any help. We're all completely self-sufficient. Yeah. House chores. Yeah, we, house chores. We had we had some cleaning need to be done. Yeah. True. Paperwork. Oh, that's not my thing. So I hate. My eye starts to twitch when people start talking about paperwork and admin stuff. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah. Projects, estimates, anything else? What I wanted to illustrate is that we're all we all have some the different needs that pop up. That's normal. Like that's that's life, right? Like we can't we are not pillars of strength all at all times where we can crush everything that comes in our path, right? As much as it's like we want to think like, oh, we're self-sufficient. The reality is. We need, that's like kind of what Michaela was talking about. She's like, we need community. We're designed for community. God is part of community. We'll talk about that in just a second. But there's a need for us to, to lean on other people at times. And it's okay to say, you know what? I can't do this. You know, I'm not going to be so prideful and arrogant that, to say that I don't need help or whatever it is. And so we need help. And so the, to say, hey, go with God because we need help, that's not that weird, right? Like we should understand that, yeah, we're creatures that need help. We're flawed. Our thinking is wrong. It could be as simple as to-do list around the house. It could be as like, you know what? I need help to fight addiction. I need help to overcome uh, emotional pain. I need help physically to be able to get certain things done or whatever that is, right? So it's it's okay to do that. And so when I say go with God, it's it's us doing it together, sometimes God will use other people, don't feel like you're less than or that you're weaker or whatever, like, because you say, yeah, I, I need some help, right? Because the reality, uh, the alternative is to go without God, and then you're going to see that where that goes. And that may be your path. Maybe you need to realize, oh, gosh, I can't do this alone. That was, that was me. You know, the first 20 years of my life, I lived life without God, didn't have anything to do whatever, I got this, and then God's like, okay, and he let me, he let me go, <laughs> you know, he's like, tell me how that goes, and then, you know, you fall flat on your face enough, eventually, like, uh, okay, I see where this goes, um, I need something to help me, <laughs> someone to help me, right, so um, we're going to be talking about that, we're going to be talking about what that means to, to, to go with God, now here we are, um, you know, the early church for example, they, they knew what it was like to go with God, right? They knew what it was like to, to need help, right? I mean, you're talking just, it, it all started almost with an idea, right? The Messiah, right? And it started with, with, with Christ, of course, more than an idea, I get that. But, like, it's just the, the inception of Christianity was just such a, like, it was, it, it took the religious world and kind of flipped it really right side up. It was upside down in a lot of ways, right? And so Jesus came in there, but when that happens, it's kind of like in, it's in this fledgling state, this little baby state, and it's, it's, it's fragile, right? And the church knew he's, the, Jesus is he's doing his ministry, and he's, and he's pouring, he's picking them up, and he's, Jesus is checked out within about three, four years, right? He's done with ministry. He's now crucified, rose from the grave, and he's like, okay, you guys got this. Of course, the Holy Spirit, right? But they, they need, because they needed the Holy Spirit to, to empower them to do the works that God wants them to do, right? And so 
they, the early church knew what it was like to be in a place of need. Okay, because they were getting judgment from, we, we've read periodically, chapter after chapter, how the Jews were coming against them, right? Their own brothers and sisters were coming against them. There was persecution that was going on, right? And, um, you know, Paul, Paul specifically was in a place where he, a lot of times he was alone. He found himself alone uh, physically, right, you know, and he needed, he needed God, right? I mean, he was persecuted for doing good. He was falsely accused. He was betrayed. He was thrown in jail, left in jail, and things are going to get worse. We're going to read that here in chapter 27. Um, so I'm just, you know, preferencing everything with saying, like, you know what? That's, like, for centuries and centuries, this has been the case for God's people. God wants to get us to, to stop being so dependent on your own wisdom, your own intelligence, your own craftiness, and he, instead, he wants you to lean on his wisdom, right? His knowledge, his understanding. Understand that you can't do it by yourself. You're not designed to do it alone. All right, so quick little intro here. Paul was uh, being taken to Rome. Why? For those that have been with us. Yeah. He appealed to Caesar for a crime he didn't commit. <laughs> but he appealed to Caesar. He's going to a higher level of court. Yep, absolutely. That's why he's being taken to Rome. So that's what that's what's happening here. What, does anybody remember his crime? His accused crime? What does the accuser say? I like doing this as a review, and it makes you guys think, and it's okay. The wheels are kind of rusty. That's cool. We'll, we'll get the rust out. We'll work it out. Huh? The Jews came against him. What was the accusation? Stirring up trouble. What was the trouble he was stirring up? They did. That was part of it. He's like, he's just a troublemaker. He's a, he incites violence. <laughs> it's pun intended on that one. But huh? he was teaching the word, but specifically, too, he was sharing Jesus. They didn't like that, right? They didn't like this whole Jesus thing. That's a cult. They thought they, they viewed Christians. They were called Christians at this time. They were they, were called, they viewed Christianity as a cult, and that they they have they have erred. They are apostate, and Paul was used to be a Pharisee, right? He was one of us, but now he's wacko, right? And he brought, if you remember, he brought in some Greeks into the temple, or he, they they supposed that that had happened, right? And so they were like, you can't bring Greeks in the temple. They're supposed to stay out in the court of the Gentiles. And you brought them in here. Blah, blah, blah. And, there was, and there was all kinds of mixture. And there was a confusion on that. And that's the court. They, he tried to throw it out of the court and left Paul in prison for a couple of years, hoping he could release him later with a bribe. And then eventually Paul, new governor, comes in. Right? That's when Paul appeals to Caesar. And that's where we are now because we're getting ready to get into Acts, to, to verse 1 of chapter 27. I want to give you guys that little that little. Uh, review there though okay let's pray real quick and then we're going to read these verses father we thank you so much for your word that instructs us and, and guides us we ask that you would speak to us individually lord because we came in here with certain needs whether we are aware of them or not lord you know of them and so speak into those things as you are so good at doing speak through this word in jesus name amen all right verse one chapter 27 we're going to go through section here. It says, and when it was decided that we should sail to Italy, again, Paul is a prisoner sailing to Italy for trial with Caesar's court. When it was decided that we should sail to Italy, they delivered Paul and some other prisoners to one named Julius, a centurion of the Augustan regiment. So entering a ship of Adramentium, now Adramentium, just to let you know, that was an ancient city um, in Mysia. The map's up here too, if you guys want to like kind of follow along like where things are going. I kind of thought it it's kind of cool to see where they're sailing from, right? Starts over here, by the way. So they're coming up this way, okay? Um, anywho, all right. So uh, ancient city, Adramentium, says, We put out to sea, meaning to sail along the coast of Asia, Aristarchus, a Mas and, uh, and then Aristarchus, a Macedonian of Thessalonica, was with us. Remember when Paul went to Macedonia? Remember we talked about that? Maybe, vaguely, right? <laughs> 
Paul went to Macedonia. Remember, he had the call. The, he had the vision. He's like, I got to go to Macedonia. The Holy Spirit's telling me to go there. And he goes there. And Thessalonica was one of the cities in Macedonia. So here's a convert from Paul's journey who's joining him and being along his side. You never know who's going to come into your life to encourage you in your times of need, right? Isn't that cool? God is good and faithful to bring people along your side to encourage you and lift you up. This guy is getting on a boat in the middle of fall, winter's on its way, and he's hanging out with some prisoners. <laughs> anyway, uh, verse 3. The next day we landed in Sidon, and Julius treated Paul kindly and gave him liberty to, to go to his friends and receive care. And when we had put to sea from there, we sailed under the shelter of Cyprus because the winds were contrary. And just pause real quick. What's happening, it, it's not like... You know, we think, oh, let's take a flight from here to here. We're done. No, they, they, they would take smaller ships and go like up the coast and, and, and resupply and drop. They, you know, they, some, they'd have some things, they'd drop them off for other people, and, they, they, you know, and they're kind of just you know, jumping along the, the, the shoreline kind of type thing. That's what's, that's the, what's, what's happening here. Um, verse 5. And when we had sailed over the sea which is off Cilicia and Pamphylia, we came to Myra, a city of Lycia. There, the centurion found an Alexandrian ship sailing to Italy, and he put us on board. So they, sw they switched ship sh si ships. <laughs> uh, when we had sailed slowly many days and arrived with difficulty um, off of Cnidus, the, the wind not permitting us to proceed, we sailed under the shelter of Crete off Salmon. Passing it with difficulty, we came to a place called Fair Heavens near the city of Lacia. Now, when, we, when much time had been spent and sailing was now dangerous because the fast was already over, Paul advised them. This, is the, this would be um, the fast, it would be the Day of Atonement. So we're talking like late fall, late September, early October, just to kind of put you there, like in the mindset of like what's going on. So this is taking some like weeks to get up here, right? And so time is, is going, and now it's getting winter, right? And so... The, more tumultuous, tumultuous storms that can happen and, and colder weather, uncomfortable. It's not, not favorable for, for sailing, right? Anyway, and so that's, what, that's what's going on. It says, this is much time had passed, verse 9. Then Paul says, men, I perceive that this voyage will end with disaster and much loss, <laughs> not only of the cargo and ship, but also our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion was more persuaded by the helmsman and the owner of the ship than by things spoken by Paul. So obviously that was not the popular opinion. It's like, look, no, man, we've got a job to do. We need to get paid. We need to drop these people off. We need to drop these supplies off. And no, we're pushing through, pushing through, right? Um, verse 12, it says, because the harbor was not suitable to winter in, meaning stay there through the winter and take off again in the spring, because the harbor was not suitable to winter in, the majority advised to set sail from there also if by any means they could reach Phoenix, a harbor of Crete opening towards the southwest and northwest and winter there. So if you look on the map here, you can see Crete right here, right? So they're on like the, the um, right there. That's where Paul says, Paul's warning right there. They just wanted to go just a little bit away. It's so close, right? And they're like, oh, man. That's the good port. They've got some good restaurants there. They've got some. They, that's they got some comfortable inns that we can stay in. They got soft. They got the soft. Remember that place they got the soft beds? Yeah, let's go there. They got food too. Like let's do that. Let's just get over there. So it's a short little journey, right? Um, by the way, the whole distance here is about 600 miles that, uh, waterway that they're trying to travel. Uh, so just kind of give you kind of it's it's a it's a chunk of, of it's a stretch. Um, all that to say is that's why they wanted to go to the west side. Um, so they're thinking, hey, yeah, we can get there, right? Well, here's verse, 5, verse 13. Let me make sure. Yeah, verse 13. Uh, when the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their desire, like, hey, south wind, this is good. They put out to sea. They sailed close by Crete. They like to keep in close to the water so they get out too far. It starts to get real choppy and stuff like that. But not long after, a tempestuous headwind arose called the Euroclidon, also known as the Northeaster. So like it was like the north cold wind start blowing. It just The wind just completely changed direction on them. You ever been like that in life? You think you're going one way and you're like, it's going to be great. That's, that's, that's where I got to get. I'm almost there. And all of a sudden, boom, just changed. You're like, really? You know? Um, anyway, verse 15 says, when the ship was caught and could not head into the wind, so they couldn't even get to where they needed to go, they're drifting out to sea because it's blowing them out to sea. They can't get into the docks. That's what's happening here. It says, we, we, we couldn't go head into the wind. We couldn't go north to, to land. We let her drive. 
What does that mean? We're just going to go where the wind takes us. We can't fight this. It'll just, it, like the ship will get torn apart if we try to muscle this through, right? They didn't have motors, in case anybody didn't know. They, don't, they, didn't, have, they didn't have motors. Um, running under the shelter of, uh, 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 where are we at? Yeah, and running under the shelter of an island called Claudia, we, we secured the skiff with difficulty. So they're, they're pulling up their, their skiff, right? And they're trying to secure things down because it's a storm's going. So things move around. They're getting blown around. The ship's toppling. Could you imagine that? Um, and when they had taken it on board, so they pull it up on board, they use cables to undergird the ship. Uh, for you who don't know, like, you can act like ships can just break apart because of the smashing of the waves and the torque that gets put on these things. And that's the last thing you obviously they want to have happen. So what you do is you take these massive ropes, one person stands on the other, and you, you run them, but you, you go up to the bow, stern. What's the? OK, that's just a test. I knew. Um, and so you, 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 let, you let the rope down, and you run it all the way back, and then you tie it off, right? So you're girding the ship. You're trying to strengthen it, right, so that it can survive the journey. Um, so there's that undergirding that's happening, right? The Bible talks about un uh, being undergirded as Christians, too, in the, in the spirit. Anyway, that's a whole other lesson. Um, so it says that they don't want to also run aground on, on Sirtis sand. So there's like some, there's some, uh, some low area, apparently, in that area. They didn't want to, to run aground on that. Uh, so they struck sail, and so were driven. So they're, now they're just kind of, you can see that they're just kind of like getting tossed around out in the Mediterranean Sea. And because we were exceedingly tempest-tossed, the next day they lightened the ship. Why would they lighten the ship? So they don't capsize. So they don't take on water. They're going to take, start to take on water. So if you can float a little higher in the water, those waves aren't crashing over the side. So that's what was happening. You just picture yourself, put yourself there. And then remember, they were prisoners. So there's prisoners that just like in chains, you're like probably down below, right? And you can hear all the chaos going on up there and then the water's leaking through and it's just, just nasty, right? Just uh, crazy s storms has, are happening here. And so they start throwing their, uh, their, their cargo overboard, which is their paychecks. That's their paycheck. Like this is their like some of these sailors. Like that's their job, right? So the only way that that's happening is because they're fearing for their lives at this point, right? That's the only reason that you would do that. So it's, they're they're getting desperate. Look how much desperate. Verse nineteen. On the third day, so this is days and days of storms, guys. Sometimes when it rains, it pours. Uh, pun intended on that one. Um, so on the third day, we threw the ship's tackle overboard with our own hands. Now they're throwing away the things that they need. For sailing, almost right. So this is okay. We need we we can't afford to take on any more water. We've got to lighten this thing even more. So the tackle is now overboard. Verse twenty says, "When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, it's cloudy constantly. Hope is like diminished. Okay, no small tempest beat on us. All hope that we would be saved was finally what church given up. You guys ever been there? You're like how." Much flipping longer is this going to last? I don't see any sign that it's going to let. I, I don't even see a light at the end of the tunnel. I'm in a hole. I'm in a pit. I'm in a cave, right? And it's that hopelessness, which is like it's, well, it's hopelessness. It, it's empty. You feel this just empty. Like you're, you're past despair. Despair is before this happens, right? They were there. That's when they're like, oh, my gosh, we got to do stuff. They got to the point where like, there's nothing else I can do. I don't even know what else to do. I guess we just quit, right? And it's just that sinking feeling that you have, right? It's, hair, it's terrible. You almost feel numb and cold. It's, it's awful. But after a long abstinence from food, so now they're hungry on top of all this, right? Long abstinence from food, Paul stood in the midst of them. Again, picture this. This is the, the there's nothing left on the ship, okay? There's just meager rations of food left, okay? It's a mess. They have no idea where they are because they can't see the stars. Hope is gone, right? Paul stands up. Men, you should have listened to me. Paul, shut up. That's probably not the thing you want to say at that time, but he did say it. I love Paul's boldness, right? He's like, huh? Yeah, right? Seriously. But like, man, 
I'm going to throw you overboard and lighten the load. <laughs> you know? It's like, I don't want to tell you I told you so. But I told you so. That's what he started off with. Anyway, he said, we shouldn't have sailed from Crete and incurred this disaster and loss. Tried telling you. <laughs> and now I urge you to take heart. For there will be no loss of life among you, only the ship. For there stood by me this night an angel of God, of the, of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve. Verse 24, and the angel said, do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you all those who sail with you. Therefore, take heart, men, for I believe God that it will be just as it was told me. However, we must run aground on a certain island. And that's where we'll, we'll, we'll park it there for just a second. So notice here too, now, this was the, when did Paul get this vision or this appearance of an angel to him? Huh? Yeah, in the night. So like it's this is the next morning, presumably, right? So Paul was going through all this storm too. So just because you're a Christian, just because you say yes to Jesus, does not mean that life is smooth sailing. Another pun intended. So, or unintended. I don't know if it was intended or not, but anyway. So he, the. We need to understand that, you know what? It's life, it can be difficult. And that's an understatement, right? And all the things you try to do, all the stuff you try to chuck out and get, just so you can try to, you know, stay up, keep your head above water and just try to survive and get to where you're trying to go and, 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 and get it done, all that stuff could amount to squat, seemingly, because you're just overwhelmed with the chaos and the and the, the frustration of life and just like, oh, what am I gonna do? Where's when is this gonna where's the breakthrough gonna happen? All those different things, right? This still happened. Paul was right along with it. Heck, he was a prisoner. <laughs> right? God was with it was it was in this the whole time. Paul was clinging to the promise from months ago when when God told him. You're going to go to Rome and preach the gospel. And God's promises, you can cling to God's promises. And those are the things that can give you hope in the darkest time, right? Those promises. So when, you, when God gives you something, man, jot that down. Record that. Staple it to your forehead. You need to know. You need to know and remember because you might need to go bounce through. That's why journals can be powerful. Go back and read what God has spoken to and how God has moved, and you just start to go, man, gosh, that's right. I remember what it was like and all this, and, all this. and I remember you said this was going to happen. Yeah, God, you're so faithful. I trust you. I don't see it. And sometimes like everything can change, but nothing changed in those moments when you have that hope again, right? But anyway, God, so he's, he's remembering to that, but then he still needed that angel to appear. So the angel appears. is like, look, Paul, it's all, it's all good just to remind you, like, you're good. You are going to Rome. Like God said, nobody here is going to die. Yeah, the ship's going to be done, though. You're going to be shipwrecked, Paul. I know. It's gets, it gets bad from worse here. But you're going to be okay, and everybody else is going to be okay. So God sent, sent a messenger to encourage him. You know? I wonder if God sends us people, you know, angels to encourage us sometimes. It's kind of cool, right? Um, anyway. Uh, take heart. So he, he delivers that to, to, the, to the crew, right? Um, Um, and there's no place, though. This is what I want you to know, too, because, like I said, they're out on they're out on the on the sea, the storm. Don't ever think that you're in a place that's too far away from God for you to come back. Don't ever think that there's that you know that it's, I'm in too dark of a place that God can't overcome it, or that this that there's no way God can you know help me get through this. Don't ever think that. That's his, that's his business. He's in the business of that. That would be like, how big is your God, <laughs> right? Is he just, you know, he's a little guy that just has own limited strength? Or is he the God who made everything, right? Like the power that comes from that, right? And he cares. He cared about little Paul, didn't he? One guy out on the, out on, out on the seas, prisoner. Right? Because he had a plan. He had a purpose. God has a plan and a purpose for you. 
He does. You know that because you're still breathing. So the issue is whether or not you yield to that or you fight against him. It's your call. Um, so don't let the enemy rob you. Okay? Don't let the enemy rob you by, by believing the lie that anyone or you is too far gone. <laughs> don't. That's a lie. Okay? Don't go there. Because I've, I've gone there before. I'm like, oh, I'm going to stop praying for that person. It's not even, it's like hopeless. Right? I get that. But just hang in there. Like, don't, you just, we need to keep trusting God, right? Because God is in the business of meeting people where they are. And he shows up in the time of need, oftentimes right in the nick of time, right? We think like, oh, now. God's like, mm, not yet. Now? Not yet. It's like my, some of my kids when they're like, you know, we're cooking dinner or something. Like, you ready? Is it ready? It's not ready yet. Like the, the, the timer's set. And like, mm, you know, remember when you were younger too, especially like, just, like you, even with a microwave, right? Like that's how, that's how our culture has gotten. Like five minutes in the microwave and you're still staring at the timer. Like, and then does it ding? Does the microwave, do we wait for it to ding all the way? Or do we, we stop a few seconds early, right? Even like, like, like those last two seconds, we can't even wait anymore, okay? Ow, 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 you know, anyway. Um, all I have to say is, like, we think we know, like, the time. Like, like it now is, like, we know the best time, right? God's timing is perfect. God created time. This is really warp your mind, right? Like, God is outside of time. He made up time, which can't even... I was talking to God this, this week, and I was just like, God, I'm having, like, I'm just, help me to understand this. I go, I'm in your creation, and you're outside of creation. I'm trying to understand you better. Like, reveal yourself to me. And I'm like, you know, how did you do this? And when, I go, oh, wait, it wasn't wind for you because you created the time. You created the wind, so you're outside wind. Anyway, you see where my mind goes sometimes. All that to say is we can trust God's, um, his, his omniscience, his all-knowing, his all-knowingness, right? We can trust that because he is outside of it. He's not bound by creation. All that to say is he can show up exactly when he means to, which is encouraging and scary because, like, how much, how long are you going to let this ride, Lord? <laughs> right? So um, just know that God is there. And, and, and no matter where you drifted off to, no matter what you're doing, he's over there too. Okay, and if you, I hope this never happens for anybody here. If you're watching online or you're or you're or you're here in person, I hope none of us drift away from the Lord. But if you do drift away from the Lord, know that He is a turn away. He didn't leave you; you left Him. Just stop, turn, boom, He's right there. He's right there. Just know that. Um, what are some things that cause people to cry out to God? Huh? Sickness, yeah. Fear, <laughs> Lord help, <laughs> right? Finances. Finances, God, I can't do this. I don't know what the solution is. Grief. Weakness, Weakness such as. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marital issues. Family issues. Hmm? Yeah, look how we all went to the norm, the, the negative side. <laughs> Guys, we can cry out to God for with good things too. <laughs> Lord, I love you, right? Can we? <laughs> He's like, guys, um, worship. <laughs> Crying out for wisdom, right? Lord, I need your guidance. Did I see another hand back here? I thought, yeah. Anger, yeah, yeah. Yeah, justice. Lord, get him. <laughs> or I will. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's good. So all that to say is... There are, there are times when we need to cry out to them, right? You know, and these, and these, I guarantee that these people, these couple hundred, three, almost 300 people on this ship, we'll see the number in a second, I think. Um, you're going to, like, they're crying out, right? And God let all of that, God was waiting. It could, it could be that, because you start to ask why, like, right? Like, God, 
if you're so loving, then why did you let this happen? And that's a fair question. Like, if you love me so much, then why did my, you know, why did my mom get cancer? If God is such a loving God, then why does he allow people, like, people to starve to death? Like, these are big questions, right? Like, there's a good conversation we can have about this. And, like, these are honest questions, right? And so here's, here's these, all these people on this ship. You know, here's Paul in chains for a crime he didn't commit, allegedly. Like, it was, like, three, two, uh, over two years ago, right? Two and a half years ago, roughly. And he's on a ship. He's, and it's, it's getting ready to, like, capsize. The boat's going to, like, every. So he starts to go, why? Why am I here, Lord? You told me to go and preach the word. I've been preaching the word. I said yes to you, and where are you? Right? You get, everybody been there? Like, just crying, like, God, where are you? I don't even hear your voice anymore. All I hear is the noise that's going on around me. And that's a tough place to be in, right? That's where Paul was. But now again, like I said, these other people, so you start to like, wait, why? There's always a reason, right? God, is, is there, that's not, he's not like just wanting you to suffer, okay? There's always a reason. So we just have to trust that he knows what he's doing, which he does, right? But we need to trust in his timing and his, his provision, okay? So I wonder, like for these, for example, you've got a few hundred people, and they're praying to their gods, right? Oh, God of the sea, save me, Poseidon, give us, you know, calm yourself, right? You know, and so they, they're they're, they're confessing their sins, ah, you know, all that stuff. Nothing was working, right, Till they got to the point where it said that they were hopeless, right? And then the angel spoke. Okay, cool. They've given up on, they have, they have come to rest that their gods are powerless. Cool. Now I'm going to step into the stage, and I'm going to, Paul, this is your time to shine, brother. And a lot of times, I've said this before, the light shines the brightest in the darkest places, right? When God shows up in those darkness, it's like, oh, Oh, yes, right? And then that's what it is. He's like, I, and he even says, Paul said, um, the God that I serve, right? The God of, verse 23, the God to whom I belong and whom I serve. So he's like, I'm going to make known to you the God with the power. He's the one that, who created the seas, and he's the one I serve, and he said everything's going to be okay, and you'll see. Church, we need to have that confidence, okay? We need to have that confidence, and there's a purpose for the delays, doesn't make it easier, but at least we can have the right mindset. All right, next section here. Back to the back to the map here. So they're stuck, floating around out here, right? Fourteen day. Can you imagine a fourteen day storm? These are experienced sailors, by the way. Like that's their job, and they're afraid. All right, verse twenty-seven it says, "When the fourteenth night had come." As we were driven up and down in the Adriatic Sea, about midnight the sailors sensed that they were drawing near to some land. They took soundings and found it to be 20 fathoms. They're talking about the, the soundings for the depth of the water. And then, and then when they had gone a little farther, they took soundings again. They found it to be 15. So it went 20, the 15. And fearing lest we should run aground. So they're like, they were getting shallower and shallower, guys. And the reason they, why, they, they couldn't see, they knew they were getting close. You'd think they'd be able to see it. No, because they're still... <laughs> It's cloudy and it's rain, and they couldn't, they couldn't see what was going on, so they're taking these soundings. Anyway, then fearing that we should run aground on the rocks, they don't want that to happen, right? They dropped four anchors from the stern. There's the stern, see? Uh, and they prayed for day to come. They're like, Lord, it's night. So it's nighttime, apparently. And the sailors were seeking to escape from the ship. They're like, we're going to crash on rocks, and the, we're going to sink. We're going to get caught up in all this stuff and the rubble and the debris, and we're going to be bashed against the rock. Like, it's better just to, to, to jump ashore and try to swim away from all this nastiness. And so um, uh, so they were, they, uh, they, they were letting down the skiff into the sea, right? So that's that little – and then under the pretense of putting it out uh, – under the pretense of putting out anchors <laughs> from the prow. So they're like, oh, yeah, we're putting down anchors. Some of, these, some of these guys got together, like, the ship's going down. we got to get out of here, right? Um, so Paul says to the centurion and the soldiers, he goes, unless these guys stay on the ship, you can't be saved. Then the soldiers cut away the ropes of the skiff and let it fall. Some other guys walked up and like, no, we're believing. Hey, we all prayed to our gods and this isn't working. We're putting our hope in the, in the Lord. It's interesting. They trusted Paul's 
words, which was he was sharing the words of God. Verse 33, it says, As day was about to dawn, Paul implored them all to take food, saying, Hey, today's the 14th day that you've waited and continued without food. You've eaten nothing. Can you imagine how hungry they were? Oh, my gosh. Uh, Therefore, I urge you to take some nourishment, for this is for your survival. He's like, okay, the ship's gonna, we're going to need to swim to shore. So like, get some energy in you, right? So he's like, but not a hair will fall from your head of any of you. And when he had said these things, he took bread, gave thanks to God in the presence of all. So he's praying. He's giving praise to God. He's crying out to God uh, and saying thank you in the presence of them all. And when he had broken the bread, he began to eat. They're all eating, and they were all encouraged. They took food for themselves. And in all, there were 276 people on the ship. Right? So when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship and threw out the wheat into the sea. Now they're throwing over the, they're committing. <laughs> they're like, all right, we're going to, all right, we're committing. We're doing this, right? They didn't even throw their food stores overboard, right? Because they want to keep, they want to make it as far towards shore as possible. So they got to get that ship floating as high as possible. It says, when it was day, they did not recognize the land. Is that where we're pausing here? Yeah, no, not yet. When it was day, they did not recognize the land, but they observed a bay with a beach onto which they planned to run the ship. They want like, we'll just run it right onto the ship. Well, that didn't work, uh, but you'll see. Verse 40, it says that they let the anchors go. They left them in the sea. They're like, okay, we can't get stuck on the rocks either. So, um, they, so they, they cut those away. They lost the rudder ropes, right? They, they, I'm sorry, they loosed the rudder ropes, and then they hoisted the mainsail to the wind and made for shore. But striking a place where two seas meet, they ran the ship aground, and the, and, the, and the prow stuck fast and remained immovable, but the stern was being broken up by the violence of the waves. So it's, now it's wedged in there, and it's, it's, it's being smashed again, just broken apart, right? The soldier's plan at this point, verse 42, is to kill the prisoners. Why? Why would they turn on the prisoners? Sorry, what? So the, yeah, yeah. So you, I think you all said that. It just was a lot of words at once. Um, right. They're like these guys are going to use this opportunity to bail, and we can't we can't track all these people. You know, we're going to be swimming ourselves. So we just 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 kill the prisoners. The reason that they would do that, remember, is that your life is forfeit if you're the if you're the soldier guarding, then your life is forfeit. If your prisoner escapes, your prisoner escapes, you pay for your life. So you're, they're super committed. They're like, no, we can't have this happen, right? So they're like drawing swords. They're like, okay, it's time to kill the prisoners, which is, that's a dark spot, right? Um, so the soldier's plan, verse 42, was to kill the prisoners lest any of them should swim away uh, and escape. But the centurion, wanting to save Paul, interesting, centurion would be the head guy, right, of, over the soldiers, wanting to save Paul, kept them, from their purpose and commanded that those who could swim should jump overboard first, get to land, and the rest would, sw- would swim on boards, because some people are too weak or injured, right? So the rest would have boards to, sw- to you know, paddle kick, go in on some on parts of the ship, and so it was that they all escaped safely to land. A little side note here, this centurion sticks his neck out for Paul, because guess what? If any of those prisoners took off, the centurion that let it happen he would have his life pay, uh, re- be required. So this centurion clearly valued Paul's character, if nothing else. And he's seeing like, hey, we're getting close to shore. What well, Paul was saying, it's starting to happen here. No, no, no. It, it's almost like he's like, Paul's conduct, even when he was suffering, even when he was in those trials, it shone brightly to him, right? And Christian... Your conduct, when you're going through dark times and suffering, will reflect Jesus or self, (laughs) right? So how do you go through the trials of life? No, I'm not making eye contact for specific reasons. If anybody's like, why is he looking at me? If God, like, like, how do you go through them? Are you complaining? Are you a complainer? Are you an uh, excuses person? Are you a blamer? Right? Or do, you, or do you mope? Right? How do you go through the trials? Now, it's not to say that we can't have emotions. I'm not talking about that because we're human. Of course. It's okay to be bummed. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to be fearful. All the, all the things. It's just to know that we go with God. If you go with only self, guess what? Yeah, you're it. <laughs> you're stuck in your own fear, shortcoming, whatever. 
but how, do you go, how you go through your trial will show what your true character is. And so here's Paul going through. With, he must have had a character that stood out because this centurion goes, no, we're not going to kill the prisoners, even though this is the normal thing to do. This is, this is technically the right thing to do from our position. Like we wouldn't be frowned upon by, by this. But no, we're going to trust Paul, the prisoner. <laughs> you know, I can picture Paul is probably singing some praise songs on this shit. It's the storm, right? He's trying to encourage people. I mean, that's the, anyway, this shows the character. Your character will oftentimes speak loudest when you're going through your hard times. This doesn't make it any easier, but at least some good can come from it, right? Like when you suffer the grief or the job loss or the, or the physical pain and all those different things, when you press on through that with a good attitude and you're worshiping God and you're still staying the course, you're reading your Bible, you're praying, you're coming to church, you're getting involved, you're helping serving other people, all despite your hardship, that speaks volumes for your faith. Volumes. Right? Because that's like character. That's like, that's like inner character, man. We talked about that. God's leading you don't expect to be smooth sailing, right? Because we're oh, that's the main point too, is where God guides, God provides, right? So like God is guiding Paul to Rome, right? God is guiding Paul to Rome. And that's his, that's his mission, right? And if he's going to Rome, he's going to get him there. Now, Paul didn't think, like, hey, I'm going to go to Rome as a prisoner and get shipwrecked. That'll be awesome. That's a great way to go, like, in the middle of winter, like, where it's icy waters, right? That's not what he wanted, right? But God's providing for it, and it's a witness to all of these 200 people, right? God cares more about your character than your comfort, which is like, one of, it's one of those, <sighs> okay, <laughs> right? Like, it's like, it doesn't make you feel better. Like, it's not a warm fuzzy, but that's biblical, man. We don't, at the dwelling place here, right, at Calvary Chapel Miracle, we don't preach the warm fuzzy gospel. It's just the straightforward gospel. Now, there can be warmth in it, but there can also be a, a tough, like a tough love in it, Right? The whole thing, man. Okay. Um, and know that and know that God will be with you along the way, no matter what, right? So, like again, we talked about that. Like, there's no place that you can go where God's not already there for you. And if He's prepared the way for you, and if He's guiding you, then He's going to provide for that, right? If He's brought you to this place, this little physical location, or this this job, or whatever that is, or this marriage, or and all that stuff, and sometimes you mentioned marriage conflicts, right? So, if God has put you together, then He's going to He's with you in that. Right to work things out and work press through those things. Right, and so he's with you no matter what, and that you can go through the storms in life. Right, you can go through the storms in life either alone or with God. It's your choice. The storm's going to happen though, <laughs> so it's your call. You can go at it alone, or you can go at it with God. You're free to choose, but I'm going to say that it's easier with God. <laughs> so, and sometimes it's just because you have an inner strength, you know. Remember we read, we'd read, we read about uh, William Tyndale last week, right? Dude was a beast, right? Like he was so committed to, the, to his, his purpose of, of getting an English version, of, you know, common English version of the Bible and paid for his life. The persecution that happened from the church, it was insane, you know? His inner character, his inner strength, like that, like I am, I am fulfilling my destiny, my purpose. Like there's certain things that it's just like it's powerful, right? Like things to die for, right? Um, and the wise person chooses to go with God, right? That's wise. Again, you can choose to not. And I did that for years. And it's when I got to the point where I'm like, I can't do this. And this was pain. Like, pain has a purpose, guys. Pain lets us know to stop a behavior, right? Pain lets us know, don't touch the hot burner. Pain, pain, you know, pain goes, hey, you know, geez, boy, when I approached my relationships like that, then that ruined the relationship. So guess what? Maybe I shouldn't do that behavior, you know? Uh, all those different things. And so, like, 
all that to say is like God, um, the wise person learns from that stuff, or you'll experience the, the wages of sin and, you know, hopefully you learn from it. Yeah, Drew, do you have something? Yeah. Well, actually, Romans 5, Romans 5, 3 through 5, it says, we, we glory in our tribulations knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character. Character produces hope. And the hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. What's the chain? It, all of those, that's, that's the character. That's, I'm glad you brought that up. That's one of my favorite sections there, Romans 5, 3 through 5. And it can be a point of encouragement for us, right? It's like, you know what? Sometimes when you're going through the darkness, it's because God's trying to work in your character. Uh, you know, which is, it's, it's like never fun, right? <laughs> but think of like a blacksmith, right? When he has to heat, he has to heat the metal. He has to hammer the metal. And then he all of a sudden heats it up to, and cools it down. And then he heats it back up and hammers it. Just that whole process. But at the end of it, you have a cool weapon. It's a cool sword or a We'll make it like a silversmith, a pretty little ring, right? A necklace, <laughs> right? But you got to get the impurities out. You got to craft it. And it takes force. And it takes heat. And it takes pressure. But at the end, it's beautiful. This world is perishing, church. One day you will perish. And then it's heaven for eternity. So any suffering here is a vapor compared to eternity. All right, we got a, one more section. This one's, this one's pretty quick because we kind of leave on this like, okay, they're shipwrecked and they're swimming to shore. <laughs> so let's, let's end here, uh, verses 1 through 10 here. Um, it says, when they escaped, verse 28, uh, chapter 28, verse 1. Now when they had escaped, they then found out that the island was called Malta. And the natives showed us unusual kindness. They made a fire for us. They made us welcome because of the rain that was falling and because of the cold. So imagine these, these natives are like, is that a ship out there? What are they doing? Is it, don't they know this is the winter? Like, this is the time to sail? Like, what have they been doing out there? And, they, and they, oh my gosh, it's sinking. <laughs> oh, they're all coming. Okay, who, who's, who's not with you? We're all here. How did you all make it? Well, this guy prayed. You know, God said he was going to do it. Now, you see, how the, you see how the adversity, the light shining in the dark. Anyway, and they, but they show the kindness. It's raining and stuff, so they built a fire, blah, 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 and try to warm them up, right? Um, verse 3, when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks. So remember, Paul was persecuted. He's been beat up. He's been whipped a bunch of times. He's been falsely accused. He's been falsely arrested. He's been rotting in prison. He's been now a prisoner. Now he's shipwrecked. Now he's on an, a strange island, right, in the middle of winter with no supplies. <laughs> Not in Rome still. Now he's gathering a bundle of sticks. He lays them on the fire, and a viper comes out and bites him. Verse 3. Because of the heat, so that here's the viper's like, oh, warm. I want to warm up too. And then bites his hand. It fastens onto his hand, so clearly the venom's going to be in there. And it says the natives saw that the creature was hanging uh, from his hand. They said to one another, this guy's a murderer. That's why. That's why. The, this, this snake came. This is judgment. This is, God, the, this, is, this is the God's judging in their mindset, right? They said, though he's escaped the sea, justice will not allow him to live, right? Paul shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. So they're all watching him. Like, dude, he's going to, he got injected, man, like this thing. And they're watching him, and he doesn't do one of these, you know. He's just fine, and he starts to, you know, he's cooking the food and getting ready. And like, a minute goes by, five minutes goes by, 15 minutes goes by, and they're like, dude's not dying. What the heck? It says they were expecting that he would swell up suddenly, fall down dead. But after they looked for a long time and saw no harm that had come to him, they changed their minds and said he was a god. <laughs> Mur like destitute sinner? Well, then he's, got he's a god. <laughs> wow. What changed? Nothing changed. <laughs> it's just their perception changed. You know? It's, it's funny how that happens, right? Truth. <laughs> the truth is a, is a funny thing. Uh, verse 6, however they, uh, well, verse 7. In that region there was an estate 
of the leading citizen of the island whose name was uh, Publius, uh, who received us and he entertained us courteously for three days. So he took him in, right? I'm like, wow. And it happened that the father of this guy lay sick of fever and dysentery. Paul went into him and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. Mission. Oh, mission. Guys, you never know. Here he got shipwrecked on an island and he gets a chance to meet somebody in their time of need. Sometimes it's your battles, your struggles, that where God is wanting to use you for the people around you. Maybe it's not about you. Maybe your life is not just about you. It's not. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Shame on us when we think it is about us. And I get it. We get caught in that, don't we? We're like, because we're making these choices. We're deciding these things. And we've got hopes and dreams. And we're thinking of ourselves. There's nothing wrong with that. But the reality is that it's, we, we need to get outside of ourselves. We need to think bigger, man. Like, you can influence your family. Start there. You can influence your neighbors, your classmates, right? That's cool. That's powerful. You can influence beyond that. You can. Talk to people. You meet people. Anyway, so that's what happens. He lays his hand on his dad, that guy's dad and heals him. So when this was done, the rest of those on the island who had diseases started coming. <laughs> and it says they were healed. Man, you think the people at Malta were excited about this shipwrecked ship? Heck yeah, because it brought Paul. And it's not because of Paul. It's because of an amazing God who cares about people. So this whole point of the shipwreck could have been to reach those sailors. Maybe it's bigger than that. Maybe it's to reach the island of Malta with the gospel. Because I guarantee Paul wasn't like, oh, you're healed. All right, catch you later. No, he's like, let me tell you about this God who just healed you. He loves you. He has a plan and a purpose for your life. You need to repent from your sins. You need to come to him. Accept the forgiveness that comes only through Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. Do you want that? We want that. Turn from your sins. Pray with me right now. Oh, and they're praying, and people are getting saved. And a church was born there on this cold winter day on the island of Malta. Right. Crazy Apostle Paul. <laughs> wow. That's powerful, man. So now it's not for nothing, right? All that suffering wasn't for naught. It had a purpose in it. Church, when you say when you go with God, every single thing in your life has a purpose. It does. It's either refining you or it's a witness to other people, right? And that's the power of it and that's the beauty of it. It's not wasted. And when you go through that, you're like, how can that even be for any kind of good? I'm telling you, that's God's promise. Okay? That's his character, and he, we see that all throughout Scripture, all throughout Scripture, all the way from the beginning where you start to see people suffer. Joseph, falsely accused, thrown in jail, right? Remember? And he became second in command in all of Egypt, and it delivered an entire nation be through him. And there's so many stories in the Bible about this. That's who God's character. He doesn't waste that. He loves you. He loves his kids. He loves his kids. But he also loves us. He loves the people who aren't his kids yet. And he wants to use us, church, to reach the lost world. Is that okay? What if God could use you to bring somebody from hell to heaven? They're going for, they're destined for hell. They're dead in their sins. There was a time, thank you, Mikhail. There was a time when you were that. Aren't you glad somebody shared something with you, whether it's a family member, a friend, for me it was a coworker? Right? Aren't you glad? You were that. Someone took the time to step out, right? But, you know, sometimes these situations are thrust upon us. Other times it's we, we go, right? And then verse 10 here, we'll, we'll close it up here. It says, they honored us in many ways, and when we departed, they provided such things as were necessary. So, you know, it's powerful, right? I just think it's, I think it's just amazing to see what, how God can move in these things. Sometimes our situations can go from bad to worse, right? They can. He, he is shipwrecked, and then he got bit by a snake. A poisonous snake, a deadly poisonous snake, right? No supply, shipwreck, false accused, on his way to a trial, right? The whole, the whole mess, right? So, don't, but don't lose heart. You'll never know when deliverance is going to come. Where was that turning point? It still, quite, hadn't quite happened, right? It's okay. At least we're out of the storm. At least we're warming ourselves to the fire. God had a place. People that were welcoming and caring and open to the gospel, <laughs> and He had Paul, the right person, at the right place at the right time. That's awesome. Right? And sometimes all it takes is one little thing to change, and everything changes. Right? And for him, it was, I got bit by a snake. And then they're like, he's a god. He's like, whoa, 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 not a god. 
but let me talk to you about this. And even then, they're like, I don't know. It wasn't until he goes and he lays hands on that guy's dad, right? And he gets healed. They see God move. And then they're like, okay, talk. you're different. You're different than these shamans that talk to us. You're different from, than these temple priests that we talk to. What's going on here? And he's like, let me tell you the true God. Okay. Which is awesome because when you go with God, you're going to see him move. So when, at church, if you're in a place where like, I don't really see God show up, well, then I'm, I'm going to put it to you that you're probably not stepping out to let him show up. If you don't see God moving in your life and in the lives of those around you, you're probably not engaging enough, enough with him and, or into the world enough. Jesus said this. He said, don't put your light under a basket. He goes, you put it up on a, you put it up on these things so the light shines, Right? We don't put our lights down here like this. It's just kind of cute things. Yes, I know that we need to get rid of our Christmas decorations. Right? Um, it's already been a conversation. Yeah. But you put the light up here. That's how it lights up the room, right? The same way. Like you are the light of the world, Jesus says. Right? So be the light, man. Get out there. Yeah. 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 For those who couldn't hear online, like, he said, nine times out of ten, when you, that, that you're, when God's moving, right, he's pushing you out of your comfort zone. So that's a good point, right? So if you're, but here's, here's what, kind of, what, kind of, what kind of Christianity is going on right now in our, in our culture? It's a comfort Christianity. And that's not good because now you don't, there's no reason just to, you, just, you can just kind of sit back and, you know, I'll just, even right now, like, and, and this, if you're watching online, this is not directed at you. But the, I'll just watch. I'll just watch online. But I just watch from the comfort of my own home. And there's a, there's a place for that. I get that you're sick. You can't. You know. You just couldn't make it or whatever. Car problems or whatever. That I get that. There's a purpose for it. That's why we have it. That's why we do it um, as a church. But but if that's your only source, it's just if we've reduced Christianity to a streaming service. We've missed community. Where's the com Maybe God wants you to come. <laughs> hey, maybe God wants a little baby to smile at me. Maybe God wants you to come to minister to somebody else. Maybe God wants you to be here to get, because he wants so-and-so to, he's going to be getting them out of their comfort zone to come and approach you to pray over you, to lay hands on you and pray for you, or to encourage you or to invite you out. All of these different things. Or maybe he wants to use you to speak life into somebody else because you went through the same thing they're going through right now, and they're in their storm, and they're crying out, and they don't know what to do. And you're the, the point of hope for them. All that to say is we're in a comfort Christianity thing, and I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. Because... God oftentimes calls us out into those situations. He created a situation here. It's a stinking shipwreck. Hopefully we don't need a shipwreck. Lord, I don't want a shipwreck, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jesus, yeah, yeah. Jesus wasn't comfortable. He didn't live the cush life. Boxes have holes, right? The Son of God has no place to lay his head. So just know this, church, and we'll land here. We'll be done. You're not alone, Okay? You're not alone. You don't have to go through this alone. How awesome is that? Not only is God with you, but the church is with you. She's smiling too, man. This is great. I love these little kids. Hey. <laughs> anyway, um, you know, God is with you. You're not alone. Isn't that comforting? I hope that gives you some comfort that you are not alone. We, have, we don't have a God who's far off that doesn't care about you. Or that he's just like, meh, whatever. You can do it. He's like, I'm in here with you. I will mourn with you. I will be with you. I will encourage you. Right? So you don't have to face the adversities of life alone, right? And when you go through life, be sure to go with God. Again, the alternative is you can go without God. There's a cost to that too. Okay? And it's far greater. So, you know, if you need, if you're feeling like, hey, I need to... to you know, I need to see God move. Um, and I'll have you guys come up right now. We're, we're, we're laying on this. Um, if you're... <laughs> Michaela's on like two weeks from due date, so she's, you know, she's a trooper here, huh? So, <laughs> um, you know, if you're in a place where you're like, hey, I need to see God move in my life, t today is the day then. Cry out to God. 
if you're like, if you need to confess to him and say, hey, you know what? I haven't been doing my life with God. I've been doing my life with self. Or I've kind of backburnered God. Sometimes maybe that's what we do, right? We just kind of, you know, he's still there. I get it, but yeah, I haven't really made him a priority. Or I haven't really cried out to him, right? I'm not doing it with him. You know, he's in the back seat. He's in the trunk. <laughs> he's on that skiff, I'm dragging behind the boat or whatever it is, right? If that's the case, you need to cry out to God today. You need to talk to him. We're going to do it right now. We're going to do it together. Um, and just and just talk with him, okay? We're going to have a moment, just a moment of silence for you. If you for, this, is a, this is a you and God thing, right? And by the way, for some people, you like to have somebody with you and pray over you. And I would gladly pray with you. So I'm going to be hanging out up here. And if you need some prayer, if you're like, hey, I would like somebody to pray for me or pray with me, um, totally come forward. Okay. I'll be hanging out. I'll be chatting with people. And if it's, it, you know, if I'm still in conversation, you can wait. I'll, I'll see you. Okay. Um, but don't leave. And if you're online watching this, you know, reach out, call the numbers, the numbers right there on our Facebook page, give a call. It makes my cell phone ring. I, I will pray with you over the phone. We can meet up and talk, whatever it is. You're not alone, right? You're not alone with this community, but you're also like, with God. So we're going to talk to him right now. Um, and go from there. So